Hi guys, so I'm here today to do my June reading wrap up. I read some phenomenal books in the month of June that I am so excited to talk to you about because my friends are sick of listening to me so I need some more people to chat with about them and um, a few different things as well. Um, like I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm on a real fantasy kick at the moment so there is a lot of fantasy here but there is some pieces that aren't fantasy either so hopefully these reviews will interest a variety of you or you're just like me and like to read everything and anything. So without further ado, let's get into the reviews. So working backwards actually, the book I finished right at the end of the month was Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So this is the 1818 edition, which if you didn't know, and I didn't until recently, this is the original text that Mary Shelley wrote. Um, and the more popular version, which is 1931, I believe, um, at least it's definitely in the 1930s, was heavily edited by her husband and published posthumously. Um, there is actually apparently another edition, but whatever. This is the edition I read, which was the original text. I thought it would be nice to experience it that way because I've never before read Frankenstein. I know, shock horror, how have I not read Frankenstein? But it just, it never came up. Um, but I'm really pleased I finally got around to reading this one, actually. So this was my Patreon book club read for the months of June and May. Um, which means I will be doing a live show all about this book, discussing it with um, my patrons um, in the next few days actually, I think it's this weekend that's happening, but if you want more details you can go and have a look on my Patreon. But I will uh, let you know briefly what I thought about it here. So I ended up really enjoying this, I found this very readable in the end. I actually read it in a couple of days once I really sat down and just read it, because once you're reading it, it's very easy to get through. and in a good way, it flows very well and you are interested to see what's going to happen so you just speed through it despite the fact that it was written in the early 1800s and it wasn't what I expected. This is what everybody I know says after they read Frankenstein for the first time. There's so much pop culture references to Frankenstein that I think we all have a preconceived notion about the story of Dr Frankenstein and his monster and it's usually wrong. Uh, this is a tragic book. There is a lot of tragedy in this book. There is a lot of sadness, not loads of nice things happen and um, it's, it's commenting on kind of lots of different themes like our responsibility to um, those we create and the people around us and to ourselves. Um, and it's really interesting and it's a book I can definitely see being so fascinating to unpack and it's one I want to, to think a little bit more about and sit on a little bit more and I'm excited to discuss in a fuller live show with other people. But if you're not familiar, this story follows Dr Frankenstein, who is a young man who goes off to university for the first time. He is betrothed to marry his cousin, Elizabeth, um, but like before that all happens he decides to go away and do some studying and gets really absorbed in the natural sciences and near the beginning of this book decides to try and create his own being, which is the monster. And that very quickly happens and as soon as he's done that he has quite an adverse reaction to what he's done and it's about the aftermath of that and what happens. So yeah, I mean definitely worth it, a classic for a reason, glad I got around to reading it. Next up I have a collection of short stories and that is Tangleweed and Brain by Deirdre Sullivan. So this is a collection of young adult short stories, although it is for everybody, absolutely. I would encourage everyone to go and give this one a shot. These are fairy tale retellings, uh, a variety of fairy tales that you'll be familiar with like Cinderella, Snow White, Bluebeard, um, some slightly more obscure ones that I'd kind of forgotten about. But reading these stories reminded me, yes I remember vaguely reading about that one. There was one in particular where I just, it had gone from my mind but as soon as I started reading it I remembered it. Yeah, it was The Goose Girl which had completely gone from my mind. But yeah, so there's also Beauty and the Beast, Hansel and Gretel, Rumpelstiltskin, lots of fairy tales that you're familiar with. And these are retellings of the fairy tales from the female characters' perspectives, trying to get inside their head, explore how they're feeling in, in, the, in the situations that they're in, their reactions to those around them. There's lots of themes of kind of dark abusive relationships that are perhaps romanticised elsewhere in fairy tales um, but kind of drawing on how dark these original themes are and how they might have actually affected those female protagonists. 
There's also an attempt to diversify the kind of princess characters, um, explore issues like body image, independence, and it's it's so thought-provoking, powerful and insightful and I was super impressed by this one. I actually had the pleasure of meeting Deirdre at an event that I chaired on internalised misogyny and fairy tales with her and Louise O'Neill at Bradford Literature Festival and listening to them both talk about the themes of misogyny and fairy tales was so fascinating and it always adds an extra layer of appreciation I think for an author's work for me listening to them speak so I would highly recommend this. The next two books I'm going to mention are all by the same author because I found a new favourite author this month and I'm actually on my fourth book by her at the moment and I'm probably going to read a couple of her books in July so look out for those. <laughs> but this is the author that I have not stopped talking about to my friends, I've been talking about her on Instagram and everyone is sick to death of her. I've mentioned her in a few videos so be prepared, I do apologise if you're a little bit sick of me talking about this author but I love her and I love her books and I haven't actually got a chance to review all three properly yet. So the first one I read was Wildwood Dancing by Juliet Marillier. So this book is set in a sort of medieval Romania. Um, I mean, times aren't specified, but that's the kind of feel you get from um, the circumstances that the characters live in. Um, and it's a fantasy book and it deals heavily with the fae and the fair folk, which is a theme throughout all of her books. That's really the magic that is central. So if you like fairies, fair folk, old like folk tales, then you should definitely give these ones a go. Some of them are based on folk tales and some of them aren't. This one is based on a couple of folk tales mixed together. We've got the Frog Prince in there and we also have the folk tale of the Dancing Sisters that cross over into the sort of fairy world during the night and dance. Um, like Those are part of the story but it is very much Juliette Marley's own story that she just uses these sort of little basis to work from that have obviously inspired her and I would say this is slightly more to the young adult side although I'm only saying that because the other books I read by her were very adult and very dark and grim in places but I think this would be enjoyed by all ages it kind of straddles the boundary between young adult and adult fantasy and I just loved reading this I found it so enjoyable I could not put it down and after I read it I just thought I have to read some more by this author which led me to discover my new favourite series <laughs> which is the Seven Waters series and I've, this is a six book series and I've read the first two in the series I'd actually picked the first one up in a second hand bookshop ages ago and it's just been sitting on my shelf in this kind of unappealing mass market paperback with tiny print format so I had been a little off put by it but that did not deter me once I got into this book and then I ended up ordering the second one online secondhand Son of Shadows because I needed more and I actually have ordered the third one and it is coming and I can't wait to read it um, but these are a series however the books follow different characters so the, the characters from the first book are in this book but they are not the central characters, we have a new protagonist in this book, it's set a little further in time and we have a new protagonist. But I obviously won't say too much about this one because it is a sequel other than I enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed the first one. So to tell you a little bit about the first one, it is it's set in medieval Ireland in this instance which is just a wonderful setting. Again deals very heavily with the fair folk and the fae, that is the central kind of magic although there's sort of a sorceress in this one and the healing arts come to play. There's just lots of nice intricately woven fantasy elements that work really well in this world and it's just beautiful. The writing is stunning, just so much gorgeous character development and world building and it's very slow paced but yet never boring. There's so much to get your teeth into that you don't mind that it necessarily takes ages to get to some of the stuff they put in the blurbs. I kind of hate the blurbs on these books because they tell you stuff that happens like halfway through. Um, but yeah, so it like gradually unfolds and it's really satisfying to follow but at the same time you are on tender hooks. I could not put these books down. I was having nightmares about them because I did not know what was going to happen to the characters. It was causing me real internal turmoil. I felt so invested in their lives and I did not feel guaranteed of joy or happiness because some tragic things do happen. It's got that element of say like fantasy like Game of Thrones where horrible things happen. Um, although they are very different to Game of Thrones in that they follow one central protagonist who is always a woman. There is romance in them and um, 
they're not multiple perspective and I prefer them to Game of Thrones but they, they've got those dark dark moments in them they're really gritty and the premise of this one is that our main character Sorka is the um, seventh child of her parents and she has six older brothers and it's inspired by the folk tale of the Swan Brothers so, so their father remarries and this woman is actually a sorceress and she puts a curse on Sorka and her brothers and Sorha has to um, break this curse, that is her task for the rest of the book and we slowly find out what happens and oh, adored it so 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 much. This one I couldn't identify sort of any folk tale influences, this one just seems like more of a plot of its own um, but they are both very well well constructed, very unique stories and just beautiful to read. I was so consumed by Juliette Morelli's writing and again Everyone's sick of hearing me gush about her, so I'm going to stop now and move on to the other books I read. Another author that I actually discovered in the month of June and I'm now a big fan of and I'm reading a second book by that author is Patricia A. McKillop. So I read her book The Alphabet of Thorn, which is such classic fantasy. Um, I believe Patricia A. McKillop has been published in the sort of Glance fantasy masterwork series because she's seen as like... A real staple of the genre and I can completely say, see why this is just such classic fantasy. This one was more of a multiple perspective story and you follow a young orphan who is adopted as a baby by the librarian of the kingdom and the librarians raise orphans to be translators and they translate ancient languages and she has a real affinity for this, this task that she's been raised to do. We then also follow a young mage um, who is training to uh, be a mage at the mage school. We follow a much older mage who is perhaps a couple of hundred years old and is an advisor to the kingdom and we follow the new young queen who has just taken over from her father much earlier than anybody expected her to so she's kind of having to prove herself in a position that she wasn't really expecting to fill at such a young age. And I loved this story. At the beginning there is a book introduced to the narrative which is written in this alphabet of thorns um, and our translator is trying to work out what it means and that's like central to the rest of the story whilst there seems to be threats coming to the kingdom and everyone's trying to work out what's going on and our characters lives start to intersect and it's not an incredibly long book, it's nothing like the 600 odd pages that these books are um, but I felt so consumed by it in even the sort of two to three hundred page length that it was and I just thought it was beautiful. It was really stunning to read, really interesting characters, really interesting world and I felt completely caught up in the magic of it all. Also during my fantasy binge, on my Kindle I read Summers at Castle Auburn by Sharon Shin. So I got this one on my Kindle because it was a book that was just sort of recommended on Goodreads based on the books I'd been really enjoying recently, so things like Juliet Marley and I thought I'd give it a go. And again this one deals very heavily with fairies and fair folk um, there is a sort of fairy realm and in this, this world fairies are slaves to humans. They are shackled with metal that keeps them from using their powers and they serve as slaves in this kingdom. But it centres around our main character who is the illegitimate son of a nobleman but she's been raised for the first few years of her life in the sort of rundown village with the, the rest of the ordinary people uh, and her grandmother who's raised her who is like a healing woman until her father actually dies and her uncle comes to tell her that she's actually of this kind of rich family so she then spends summers with that family at Castle Auburn and then spends the rest of the year with her grandmother in the village and yeah I won't say too much more about the plot it's just kind of about how things change at Castle Auburn over time and life becomes more serious and there's expectations placed on her that she wasn't expecting to be placed on her and the relationships between the characters as they grow up and it was really enjoyable like I did really enjoy this one I, I read it really quickly it was just nice escapist literature but I did find some of the plot elements a little bit too easy like things happen just a little bit too conveniently um, and it was a little bit predictable. That didn't hinder my enjoyment of it, but it's not going to be one of those long-lasting fantasy books that stays in my imagination that I adore for years to come, like perhaps I expect the Seven Water series to be. It was just a little bit of escapism for the time, and I kind of saw what was going to happen, and I enjoyed it for what it was. But lastly, I also read The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black, 
I'm obsessed with fairies. I admit it. I'm really sorry. What can we do? I will read some different books in the month to come, I promise. <laughs> this one's actually set in the modern day, um, in a world just like our own, in America, in a small town called Fairfold, which has this kind of legendary relationship with the fairies. Um, they are supposed to live very closely to the fairies and most characters don't deny this. It's, it's very obvious. It's not is there? Is there not? There's actually one of the characters in it is a changeling who was um, left with his parents by his elf mother in the human world and it's about our protagonist who is an ordinary mortal girl and she made a deal with the fairies when she was younger and that deal is starting to creep into her life and impact her life and then some other strange things start to happen and some people start to be hurt by magic and it's what's going on and what is her part in everything that's going on. And one of the things I really liked about the story was the relationship between her and her brother. It was just a lovely relationship. I think it was built really well. Um, it was just really nice to follow. I really like, I mean, I don't have siblings, but I really like when authors really explore and depict really positive relationships between siblings in the way that I like to see really positive friendships. Uh, I just think they're really nice relationships to see depicted in books and I thought that was really nice about this. Again though this one was a little bit predictable and had some you know YA tropes or cliches that you might expect from a young adult book. Again I enjoyed reading it well enough but I actually preferred The Cruel Prince. Although I don't know if that's entirely Holly Black's fault because some of the plot elements of this really reminded me of a book that I read last year called like The Witch's Kiss or something like that that I really didn't like. And this was much, much better, but some of it was quite similar um, and that I found frustrating because it just reminded me of a book I really didn't like, but that wasn't the fault of this book. Um, and I did enjoy it, it's just not a new favourite. It is a standalone however, so no questions about whether I'm going to read the sequel or not and I do plan on reading the sequel to The Cruel Prince so I am definitely still a fan of Holly Black's work. But those are all the books that I read in the month of June. Now that I'm done I can go and open my window again um, and let the noise seep in but also the fresh air because it's hot, hot, hot and my wee Scottish soul can't deal with this like 28 degrees. Um, but I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I would love to hear what the best books you read in the month of June were or if you have any thoughts on the books I've mentioned in this video or more fantasy book recommendations because I'm a binge reader. I find a genre I'm enjoying. I binge it until I'm sick of it and then I move on. <laughs> what can I say? But until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!